Hey everyone and welcome to the most epic Lego Ghost review and comparison ever. Um, I just figured that since I just gotten the brand new Ghost in Phantom 2 and I hadn't reviewed the original Ghost on this channel that I would just do both together. So I will do a review and a review and then at the end we'll kind of compare them but it won't be a super in-depth comparison because the reviews are together. So I just kind of want to show them side by side is what my goal is. And so obviously here we have the brand new 2023 Ahsoka's Ghost. Ahsoka Show Ghost in Phantom 2. We have the 2014 Rebels Ghost. So um, pretty cool. Let's get right into it. Um, we'll start with 2014 first. Starting off with the Ghost from 2014. This one is set 75053 with 929 pieces and four minifigures. It retailed for $89.99 and in new inbox is about $694 and then used is $403. So it's still relatively expensive. I do imagine that the price will continue to drop because this new Ghost is really good. Um, but nonetheless, this is what we have. The biggest difference with this Ghost and the new Ghost is that this Ghost did not come with any ship in the back. Um, we have a separate set for the Phantom and then a separate set for the Phantom 2. Now both of them do fit in, but it's kind of arguable if they fit in well. So let's take a look at the minifigures first. Taking a look first at the 2014 minifigures starring Kanan Jarrus. And I think this was a fantastic minifigure when it originally came out. Um, I have the brown hair version, of course, the very common version. Um, but I love the detailing on the legs. That was pretty good. Um, arm printing was pretty unheard of back at this time, but I think that the detailing on this minifigure is great. We did get a brand new exclusive hairpiece for Kanan, as well as a double-sided face and printing on the back torso. Next, we have Zeb Aurelius, or Garizeb Aurelius, from Rebels, and he is actually based, if you didn't know, on the concept version of a Wookiee from Macquarie Concepts. Um, and they kind of just restylized him to make a new species for Star Wars. And I remember getting him and thinking he looked so un-Star Wars-like, it was just maddening to me. And now I could not think of him as anything other than a Star Wars character. It's really funny. This Zeb goes for quite a bit of money because they've never redone him. I am curious to know if he will show up as a redo if he appears in the Ahsoka show at all. But I really, really like his purple body and yellow jumpsuit. It's just very, I don't know, there's something kind of cartoony about it. I just like it. And of course, he has a custom molded head. And here's a look at the back. And then we have Harrison Dula, who is also a really nice character. This is her first appearance. And that jumpsuit is not too bad. I was really excited at the time to get a, twi a Twi'lek minifigure, another one. So she's really cool in that bright green. She comes with a secondary face as well. And her uh, Liku are detailed, and I really like that. And the most boring of all, we have a Stormtrooper that came with this ghost, and it is stylized, as you can tell, with that long mouth print and some simplization on the torso, but printing on the legs. Unfortunately, you could not get the whole ghost crew by just getting the ghost. And this drove me nuts for the longest time that this had like an episode two clone trooper face. I feel like it should have been stylized and also stormtroopers are individual people. Single sided head and don't forget the printing on the back of the torso. Overall, this was a fine minifigure selection. Um, four is a little bit small maybe, but that Garazeb is a fantastic minifigure um, and really worth it. He is the only exclusive one in this set, I believe at this point. All right, so here is the ghost. And overall, I really liked the ship when it first came out. I think I was amongst the few people that actually liked Robbins upon its premiere. Um, and I waited to get the ghost for a while until I had some money, but I remember thinking that $89 for this was relatively decent. I specifically got it, I remember, because I wish that I had, they had a Millennium Falcon out. I was like starting to collect more expensive sets and I'm like, you know, I don't have a Millennium Falcon and I really wish that I had one. Um, but the ghost is out and I'm like, this is kind of like Millennium Falcon for Rebels. And so that's kind of how I always have viewed it. I thought that the build for it was really fun and the shape and the design I have always, always liked for the ghost. So um, just taking a look kind of at the um, exterior, we do have some stickered elements. Um, it's not quite as colorful as the new one in my opinion, but I do think that it's very standout and it looks great. Some of the building techniques are very cool. I just realized I had this piece, <laughs> I have this piece built wrong. We have three main cockpit bubbles, which are pretty cool. Um, the center cockpit does pull out. It is on just a little clip in the back and you can fit two characters in the front seat, which is really nice. I do like that feature. And then the bubble on this cockpit is printed and it slides in pretty easily. 
We have an upper cockpit with, again, a this one is a sticker, um, which I personally don't think looks too bad. I'm actually looking at it surprised at myself on how well it's applied. Um, and then we can fit um, somebody else up in the top there. And then we have seats, some, um, we have a little gun at the bottom that does spin around, so that is fun. And then up in the center, we have the upper cockpit, um, which is just a top gun, and you can completely take it out to put a figure in. It is relatively clunky to be able to do so. You have to take off the whole top of the dome, squeeze the character into the seat. But the gun does go up and down, and the fact that it's removable does allow you to spin it 360, so that is pretty cool. Um, on the sides, one of the features that is specific with this ghost is it has escape pods, and I personally really like the escape pods. They don't actually exist, I don't think, canonically, um, but I really like them. I like the way that they fit on these like little skids, and um, they have just a little bit of detailing, nothing super crazy, and then they're stickered as well, but they open up and there is a seat for a character um, or more, potentially. And I, I don't know why, I've just always really liked the escape pods on this ship. They're very easy to go in and out, so I really like those quite a bit. Um, and then, of course, in the back, while this did not come initially with a smaller ship, the back side, the docking bay, if you will, is completely fleshed out, and I really do like the way that looks. We have another sticker in here. You can have minifigures standing in here. You can pretend that they're, like, loading up the ghost with supplies. There are two tiny doors in the background that I think look pretty good. I just really like the way the back of this ghost looks without a ship. Um, and then we have some orange looking engines, which are kind of awkward. They get real skinny and then really large. So those ones are kind of weird. And then you can see inside a little bit. There is a tiny little hatch where a character can stand and we have some stickers. And then down in here, there is a box. And I don't remember how to get it out. I don't remember that spin feature to be honest. Look all the way in the bottom. I had to flip this one around to see it, but there is an option where um, there's a little pull handle on the bottom of the ship, and if you pull it, this little box can drop, and I believe the box has a holocron inside, um, but you can't go into the ship in any more detail other than those two aspects, um, which I think were fine at the time. I remember being kind of glad that they gave just a little bit of interior, but kind of looking back, it's sort of a bummer because the ship is so large, and you can't take off any part of it really and so it's actually kind of tight to fit everybody you certainly can um but that is that specifically it works it really works and for 2014 this was really good then taking a quick look at the phantom this is the original phantom it was a super super ugly ship but you had to get it if you wanted to get the whole entire ghost crew and i do remember i got the phantom first and then i was like well i need the ghost now so that i can have everybody and i do um and i've always been very satisfied by that the phantom does sit inside the ghost um, okay, it actually is built to fit, it just is really large. So that is what it looks like. I think it looks best with this original Phantom, because that's what it was built to fit. Um, but this Phantom is obviously way over large, just because this was its own playset. And then a couple of years later, we did get the Phantom 2, and the Phantom 2 can fit as well. However, it is not as good. I never displayed it with the Phantom 2, um, but... It's got little legs, so that makes it kind of awkward, and it doesn't sit in there super well. It just looks ginormous. Um, obviously, before this new set came out, um, I thought this looked just fine, but now, you know, you really can tell how oversized this thing is, but it is really cool. Um, it is quite a bit neater than the new Phantom, in my opinion, because it is so much bigger. It's more accurate to being able to hold more people. You can fit Chopper inside. It's got a little trunk area with a chest. It has its own landing gear. Again, like I said, this was its own set as well, so... Um, those to be considered, we have two phantoms, both of them can fit in the original Ghost, and I think that's really cool. I loved the fleshed out docking bay area. I think that that's really neat. That's basically the 2014 Ghost, and here we have the 2023 Ghost and Phantom 2. This one is ages 10 plus, its set number is 75357, with 1,394 pieces, so quite a bit more. Um, this one does come with five minifigures, so one more than prior, and it is more expensive at about $160, so take all of that with a grain of salt. Um, let's go into these minifigures real quick. Now for the brand new 2023 Ghost minifigures, this one is Lieutenant Beta, I think is how it's pronounced, and he is a Mon Calamari, it looks really cool. He's got the New Republic blue and white flight suit, which I really like. And then a little bit of printing on the back of the torso. 
We have General Harris and Dula, and she is fantastic. I do think that this one is the superior minifigure, which I'll show the other one in just a minute, but I just really like her bomber jacket. It looks awesome. And of course, printing on the legs, which is pretty standard at this point in time with Lego Star Wars. She also has printed Leku and a um, the ghost symbol on the back of her bomber jacket and a very angry face. And here she is next to the OG Hera. I think both minifigures are good, but definitely the 2023 one just knocks the old one out of the park in terms of detail. Though with the old one, you could definitely tell her rebel style jumpsuit a little bit better. And she just looks, you know, more novice. So I think that that's pretty cool. And this is First Officer Hopkins, and I don't really know why they included this minifigure other than maybe they just were lacking minifigures to put with this ship. I think we did just see him in the most recent Ahsoka episode, but so far he has played a tiny, tiny role so far um, and no character development or anything. So it's interesting that we get him as a minifigure. Here is his back printing. Always good to have New Republic officers and officers in general. I do like that though. Then we have Jason Sindula, which if you didn't guess by the last name, this is Hera's son. He is seen in Ahsoka. I think he's really cute. I love his jacket. I think the hair piece choice is also very, very good. However, I was talking about this with a couple people. It's totally inaccurate. He should have green hair and he had green hair in Rebels and he has green hair in Ahsoka. My only thought was that the Lego team received images of Jason in the shade. And so he looked like he had brown hair. In reality, he has like a dark kind of subtle green tone so people were joking that maybe this would turn into the old Kanan when he was released initially with black hair and then came back corrected with the brown hair that'd be kind of funny um, that it also would happen to his son we'll see he is technically very inaccurate though because of that hair and then he does have a secondary face and this is the back printing on his torso and last but not least, we have Chopper. And this Chopper has been redone. I like the little piece on the very top of his head. Um, I still find that he's inaccurate though. His torso is a white and I'm pretty sure he should be gray if I am not mistaken. Um, but they've updated the prints for him and he even has back printing, which is so impressive. I don't know why they can't transfer this to all of the droids coming out. Here he is compared with the original Chopper and I must say the new one I definitely think is superior. Um, the old one is fun, but the new one just has just such a cuter print. I think Chopper just looks much more friendly and I don't know, I just like it a lot better. Though I think that the 2014 coloring is more accurate. Overall, I think that the 2023's minifigure lineup for the Ghost is really good overall. I am happy with the minifigures. Alrighty, minifigures aside, and I do have to say that this Ghost is a lot more colorful. Um, it, I think the building technique, just as the years have gone on, has improved. We use smaller pieces to get more detail. That's why the piece count is so much higher on this one. And this is really a very significant ghost. Initially, um, when this came out, I was going to wait on this because I already had the ghost. Um, but I'm really glad that I did it because, to me, this one is much superior. The old one is very nostalgic to me, but like this one, you just really can't beat it. And so let's start off kind of in a similar manner that we did with the other ghost. Um, and we have our center cockpit bubble here, which is very cool. It does open up and the screen is printed. And then we have the upper portion, which is another sticker. I personally don't think the sticker looks as good. I think it is a little bit more bubbly, um, but you can pull this area out for better access, which I think is really nice. I really like the internal cockpit of this bubble seat. It looks so good. There's some stickers and that steering wheel usage is really cool. And then of course you can access the upper deck for that other um, seat. And this one is just kind of tensioned in just like the other one, but using a different method. And I don't really know which one's better in that way. I think that they're both pretty equal. Um, one thing with this ghost that I will say, it's very annoying. We have a turret here, which is really nice and it has a play feature, but in order to make it work correctly, you have to make sure that this gun is lined up when you put this cockpit bubble back in. And I just find it really annoying to do. I'm always putting it in without lining it up. And so there is a play feature underneath here where if you pull, press on these little tabs, it does make the gun swivel and twist, which is really fun. Um, and then of course up top, we have another little upper gun cockpit and the guns can go up and down, but they don't swivel anymore. And that's because the build is totally different. You just lift the center bubble here 
and then seat a character inside. The application for putting a character inside is much simpler. I think the bubble looks a lot better, but we do sacrifice that turning movement um, in this new ghost. So that being said, I really like that he just sits in there and there's nothing to tension in this minifigure, which in this instance, I think is wonderful. Um, I personally really like that feature. Um, we do not have any escape pods in this set. We just have these like little side sections, but there are drop down ramps. So boarding ramps on both sides, which are actually pretty cool. They're very hard to use if you're doing it in a play setting, but I like that they're included. I think that that's really cool. Um, and then on the back, we have blue engines this time. I do think that they look better. Um, they're closer together. They just look more accurate to me. Um, and then we'll go on to the Phantom 2 in a second, but I'm just gonna remove it so that you guys can see that there is no docking space anymore. They've sacrificed that for this smaller Phantom um, and almost more compact ghost build. Um, so to me, it's a bummer. You definitely don't wanna have this ship without its um, mini ship versus the original ghost, you definitely could and it would be just fine. Um, that being said, this whole panel comes up. You can see so much of the interior of this new ghost. I love it. This was something that I didn't know that I needed. Um, we have a little sink. There's a bucket in here with a fruit. You can see the entrance doors on the sides. Um, with the little caution logo on the floor. I just, it looks so good. And then dropping down those ramps, it's just, ugh, it's super, super nice. There's a lot of space to fit characters in here. Um, there is a little, looks like navigation station on the other side. And then that does lead, there's little stairs that lead right up into this main driver's cockpit here. And it just looks really good. The only thing that they could do better with the ghost is if they added a spot for sleeping because you saw that a lot in Rebels. Um, there's just not enough space unless they made a UCS ghost, which I would definitely consider buying that. Um, but this whole panel just comes up and it's pretty sturdy. It does have a hinge to help the angle lay a little bit better and you just press it down from the back. And so overall, that is the ghost. Both sets are completely stickered. Um, and so that is also something to keep in mind. I think this one has more brick built detail though. I will say. So moving on to the Phantom 2. This one is just a little mini ship. It's super tiny. Um, the cockpit does open to allow one minifigure to sit inside and it has some interesting building angles, I will say, as well as some other stickers. And you could take Chopper's head off and put it on here, though you can't have the whole minifigure seated inside like you can with the old Phantom 2. And then there are some blue engines on the back. So that's basically this 2023 set. Let's directly compare it now to the 2014 Ghost as well as the Phantom 2. All right, we'll start with the Phantom 2s. As you can tell, the size difference on them is significant. Like I mentioned, the landing gear before, the cockpit is larger. You can fit a whole chopper on this one versus just the head of the chopper on the 2023 one. Um, more stickering, of course, on the large one. Again, it was marketed as its own set. So that is something to keep in mind. Um, I do like both of them in their own perspectives. This one though definitely would never, the 2023 one would never be sold on its own, um, but it works as a great accompaniment to the ghost. And then ghosts together, and you can tell just kind of the difference. You mostly can just see the age of the builds. I think that the 2014 was fantastic when it came out and it met all the requirements for 2014, but we really were in need of an upgrade and I didn't know how badly until this 2023 ghost came out. Um, the angles of the ship are just a little bit different. I don't think they were able to achieve the correct angles in 2014. Um, the color scheme is just slightly off. The things do change between the movies. This one's Rebels, this one's in Ahsoka, so a lot of time has passed, so keep it, keeping that in mind. The bubble turret on the center is much better in 2023, though I do like that the 2014 version can spin, so I'll give it that. I think the sticker on the top cockpit of the 2014 version is better than the 2023 version. I love the escape pods on the 2014. I don't like that there's nothing on the 2023, but we do have drop down docking ramps. So, I mean, to each their own. Um, and then of course on the back, I definitely think 2023's engine detail is much better than 2014, but the docking area for the Phantoms is much better on 2014 versus 2023. I love this docking feature. And this was a primary reason that I bought this back in 2014 is I just love the way it looked and I love the tiny doors. Um, of course, with the interior now, um, the 2023 definitely takes the cake. The interior is massive in comparison, though I am still kind of sad that they can't 
flesh out the sides of the ghost to be any kind of interior. Like I said, if we get a UCS set in the future, maybe that one will come to pass. That's pretty much it for this review and comparison, guys. I definitely recommend going and picking up the 2020 three ghosts. It's not a hard sell. It's really not. I mean, if you were wanting the ghost, why pay $400 used for one when you could buy one for $160? That is overall better. So anyways, guys, I hope that you enjoyed my video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Do you have either of these? Let me know. Uh, and thanks so much for watching. Till next time, I'll see y'all later.